This report was compiled between the 1st of October and the 10th of November by request of the commander. It represents acres of ground covered. Dozens of persons interviewed. Close observation during any time of the day. Purpose to help determine what measures are needed to protect an installation against espionage, sabotage, and subversion. Here is where it all began. The commander in this case has just returned from Europe, where he had been in charge of a missile command. He knows something about espionage, sabotage, and subversion, knows it firsthand. He realizes how important it is to have tight security. Now, as commander of a military installation stateside, he feels strongly that the need for security is no less important. Vital ordnance material is being brought in. New buildings are to house further material of a classified nature. Can he stand guard at a window and keep watch 24 hours a day? Can any one person? What is the answer? To get this answer, the commander calls on the installation intelligence officer. Major Harding, would you come in here, please? Thank you. Well, we've complied with security regulations, sir. I mean, we followed the book. Good. And we're checking our physical, personnel, and information security coverage for any areas that may need strengthening because of the installation's new mission. But uh, is that enough? Of course, we haven't needed changes in the past, but... Uh, with our presently changing post-composition and mission, our security may be weak from a counterintelligence point of view. Yes, sir, I know. A lot of changes are taking place now at Fort Bradley, with more to come. Right, and fast. That bothers me. We're all so busy, so much to do at once. Sir, I believe a counterintelligence survey could help all of us. By counterintelligence? Yes, sir. In that way, we can cover every inch of ground, old and new. Well, let's hope that anything new they come up with can be handled within the budget. Okay, let's get started. Let's see what such a survey brings out. Very well, sir. Under the provisions of AR 381-130 and First Army Operational Directives, it is requested that a counterintelligence survey be conducted at your earliest possible convenience. Acting on behalf of the commander, the, the installation the intelligence officer sends a request for a counterintelligence survey to First Army. Governor's Island, First Army headquarters, where requests for counterintelligence security surveys covering about 80 of the country's military installations are submitted. The office of G2 approves the request and forwards it through channels. The directive goes to the INTC group located in the metropolitan area. Implementation of the directive begins with a file check. According to the files, a counterintelligence survey was made of Fort Bradley about 10 years ago. Purpose of this check, to locate any material the INTC special agent should consider prior to conducting a counterintelligence survey. The correspondence is transmitted by the INTC Group Headquarters to its appropriate region. Further action on the counterintelligence survey takes place at Region Headquarters. A field office to handle the survey is selected by the Region Commander. At this time, two interesting items are brought to his attention. One, a CI file on a civilian employee at Fort Bradley. The other, a report from a federal agency. The file on the civilian employee concerns Margaret Gilmore, scheduled for assignment to a sensitive job requiring a security clearance. But her loyalty is found questionable. Her name is on the membership list of a subversive organization cited by the Attorney General.
The report from the federal agency refers to a public residence just outside the installation. Number 123 Ocean Park Lane. This house was occupied by a hostile agent, Anton Buloff, who figured in a widely publicized espionage plot. Buloff, however, had nothing to do with operations at Fort Bradley. Why, then, is it important to bring this matter up in connection with the counterintelligence survey of Fort Bradley? Also, why is it important to bring up the matter of Margaret Gilmore's qualifications for security clearance? Please along to the field office. Good background. Tells them that Fort Bradley, like all other military installations, is a potential opposition target. Uh -huh. You know, the hostile agents are all around. Today, they're on the outside. Tomorrow, inside. Crawling underneath unprotected fences. Breaking safes. Undermining personnel looking for the, for the chink in the armor. You know, the weak link? <laughs> More than ever, that's for sure. Peel off and Gilmore. Oh, good. I've got their files in here. I'll tell you what I want you to do. Take these and send along this whole survey. Assigned to accomplish the counterintelligence survey is a field office located near Fort Bradley. Except for the insignia, there is nothing in the operations room that can be construed as glamorous or having a cloak and dagger quality. It is a business-like atmosphere. This is reflected in the attitude of the agents themselves, their dress, their actions. In civilian clothes, they could be holding any military rank. Indeed, their rank, as far as counterintelligence work is concerned, is unimportant. Important is that they are capable, personable, knowledgeable, and tactful. The request for the new counterintelligence survey on Fort Bradley is now in the hands of the officer in charge, also known as the OIC. Preliminary planning gets underway as the OIC turns the request over to the operations officer. Say, Bob. Oh, hi, Bill. Hope you're all set for that uh, new project I promised you. Take about three weeks. Have a seat. I've already spoken to Bradley on the phone, their installation intelligence officer. They're ready for us. Two men should be able to handle it. Make it three. Okay, Chief. Incidentally, use that new man, Miller. He needs the experience. Check our own files for further background. Meanwhile, I'll hop over to Bradley and start the ball rolling. Okay. The OIC arrives at Fort Bradley to establish liaison with the installation's intelligence officer. And through him meets the commander, the man who requested the counterintelligence survey. A meeting of this kind is in the nature of good public relations. It lays the groundwork for the team of INTC special agents that will conduct the survey. Of special interest at this time is a proposed date for the initial briefing of the commander and his staff by the INTC survey team. When do you want to start this survey? We'd like to start by 1 October, sir, if that's all right with you. 1 October, that's all right with me. Uh, how about you? Does that fit into your schedule? Perfectly all right with me, sir. Then uh, it's agreed? Yes, sir. I'd like to give you an overall... Following his return to the field again. office, the OIC briefs the special agents. This is an aerial photograph of Fort Bradley, which was built during revolutionary days. You'll find lots of history in the buildings and the grounds. This side of the installation runs right down to the edge of the water, the Atlantic Ocean, with this whole coastal area visible and, I might add, vulnerable. Over here is an Army airfield used for the transportation of special equipment and personnel. Now with then, preliminary planning well underway, it is time now to consider logistics. What tools of the trade are needed for the job? Why take a typewriter? 
You mean a big installation like Bradley can't afford to lend us one? That's not the point, Al. We've got to be self-sufficient. Just try not to get in anyone's hair. Yes, from this time on, the survey team is operationally independent. In charge of the team is a special agent with years of experience. Another experienced special agent, an authority on security regulations whose knowledge will be of great value during the counterintelligence survey. The inexperienced member of the team, but he knows photography. Graduated recently from the photo course at the Army Intelligence School, he will obtain pictorial coverage during the survey. A final bit of advice from the special agent in charge. When we get going on this survey, our job is not to get in the way of operations. We're there to help the commander, not to embarrass him or to make things tough for him. Any questions? No, I'll get working on these. All right, Paul. Now you better come along with me. We're going to visit the local police near Bradley. Oh, you can leave that camera here for the time being. We'll be coming back. The INTC credential, in addition to serving as a means of identification, is a badge of responsibility. Used with discretion, it can open doors and establish a friendly relationship so important in CI work. It's been pretty quiet. A few robberies. The drugstore over on Caton Boulevard got held up last Saturday. Got away with $122. Anybody from the Army Post involved? Eyewitness claimed that the driver of the getaway car was wearing an Army uniform. We're working on it with the Provost Marshal. No identity made. So far, no. How about the neighborhood as a whole? Would you call it substantial? We're pretty good quality folks. Middle income, family type. We have the usual noisy kids. Every once in a while, they break out in a rash. No real delinquency problem, though. No of any subversive groups or individuals? Nope. About a year ago, the federal agents picked up a fella. I can't remember his name now. Bulov? Bulov. That's right. But it seemed he wasn't after anything at Bradley. No, no subversive organizations. We have our local political clubs, fraternal organizations, things like that. And then as far as the neighborhood is concerned, there's nothing that might be considered a threat to the security of the installation. Well, not to my knowledge. But you never can tell what you'll find around sensitive military That's right. All you never can tell. Around. The team has now established a friendly relationship with local authorities and is building a yardstick to measure the degree of security needed for Fort Bradley. It is now ready for the next important preliminary step. The checklist. This list, a general type checklist when completed, will contain items to be covered in a counterintelligence survey. It is developed from long range experience factor of the survey unit based on documentary guidance. Installation open, closed, or semi-controlled. What are the physical limits? Physical limits. Coordinate with Provo Marshal. Coordinate with PM. Is the installation within a perimeter? Fence. If so, where is the fence located? Type of fence. Height. What kind of fence wire is being used? Type of posts. What about the ground under the fence? Good. Any tunnels, culverts, ditches, or other openings in the fence. Does a railway or public road pass through the installation? Mm -hmm. Say, why can't we just check off items as we go along with the survey? We might forget something. Not if we're on the ball. 
Do you ever go on a photographic assignment and then realize that you left your flash bulbs home? Who, me? That's why we make checklists. Well, why aren't there any printed forms available? Well, there are, for certain types of surveys. Here. Let me show you. Here are some security standards in the checklist form used for missile sites. It's a specific type checklist. You will find a lot of things in here that can be applied to the installation we're working on. For example, do the physical barriers, including gates and or entrances, comply with the standards, appear to be adequate, and provide maximum protection consistent with the requirements of the unit? Reminds me when I was with an INTC unit overseas. One of the surveys we made there was on a missile site. Everybody was security conscious from the commander on down. The place was properly fenced with good overhang. And the entrance too showed a healthy attitude towards security. Well guarded, everything perfect or as near perfect as you could get it. But we found a long stretch of cable leading from the control van to the target tracking radar completely uncovered. It should have been underground. And that was in a foreign country with hostile agents always at your back door in force. Here you are, Al. Look them over. Now, Paul, where were The we? checklist for Fort Bradley grows until every category is covered. Personnel, the most vital factor in a military installation and easily the most vulnerable, a sample check. To all personnel handling classified information have proper clearance. Classified defense information, another vital factor and an area where a majority of violations occur. Sample check. Is secret or confidential material destroyed in accordance with paragraph 64, AR 380-5? Well, I guess that's it. Cigarette? Oh, yeah, thanks. You see, hundreds of items must be checked during the course of a counterintelligence survey. However, no matter how comprehensive the checklist is, it still must be used only as a guide. A lot depends on the size of the installation, its location, its mission. Yeah, I see what you mean. It is now time for the initial briefing. The initial briefing is conducted to apprise the commander and his staff of the objectives of the counterintelligence survey and how these objectives will be attained. Staff members having a primary interest in the counterintelligence survey include intelligence officer, Provo Marshal, Post Engineer, Ordnance Officer, Post Signal Officer, Logistics Officer, Personnel Officer, and the Operations Officer. So that with the new buildings going up, new equipment coming in, we need tighter security. And now I'll turn the briefing over to you, Mr. Francis. Thank you, sir. I'd like to begin by saying that we're here to help you. We're going to try to analyze your present security measures as they are being applied here at Fort Bradley. As soon as we complete the survey, we'll describe everything in a survey report. It'll be completely objective. It'll be your report, not ours. It'll serve your interests, not ours. In this report, we'll make certain recommendations. That is, suggestions as how to correct deficiencies, make readjustments, 
always bearing in mind the level of security required at this installation. We'd appreciate it if you made available records. Personnel rosters, policy files, security SOPs. Just say the word. How about logistics? A room to work in? A room would certainly help, sir. Outside of that, I think we have everything we need. Tools, typewriter, stationery. Don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, sir. Oh, one other thing. Fire away. About recommendations. If we find any deficiencies in security, we'll try our best to make on-the-spot recommendations. Well, that certainly would help us. General, we'd like to start tomorrow morning, if it's all right with you, sir. It's fine with me. How about you, gentlemen? Sooner the better, sir. That's all, gentlemen. Diplomacy, knowledgeability, cordiality. These qualities will invariably pay off. Now to meet other key personnel. The Provo Marshal. For information on the guard system, personnel and vehicle control, alarm systems and similar security measures. Engineers for blueprints of buildings, lighting system, utilities and firefighting equipment. For information on the communication system, both regular and emergency, they call on the post signal officer. The time has come for a preliminary tour of the installation in the company of an escort supplied by the IIO. The escort will accompany the INTC special agents throughout the survey. This is the last preliminary step. Early tomorrow morning, the INTC team will begin the detailed counterintelligence survey in answer to the request by the commander for tighter security against espionage, sabotage, and subversion.